I'm New Age Serve Alarm and this is Alert Tech Security. So today I'm going to do a demonstration of a really rare security system. It's called the FBI Star Phone and it's this one right here on the left. As you can see, it's very similar to the panel on the right, and there's actually a reason for this. So the Star XL 4600 is a basic security system from 1989. It had the distinction of being the first panel made by Fire Burglary Instruments to be keypad programmable. Previously, with older systems made by this company, you had to program these by using what's called a programmable read-only memory burner which was an external device and you basically programmed a chip and you plugged it into the panel. It's a relatively simple system and it has six zones, it's not expandable and it has a very basic keypad bus making use of shift registers. Really nothing to it. The Starphone system was introduced in the early 1990s. It's actually a combination of two products one of course being the 4600 and the other one being an earlier FBI product called the Secure Phone. So the Secure Phone was an add-on for their older systems from the 80s and essentially what that did was it allowed you to control your security system using a telephone. The circuit board inside the Star Phone is much larger than the one inside the 4600 but there is a little bit of similarities with the design. It's kind of got some basic divisions like the lower portion of it is pretty much identical to the 4600 but the upper portion of it is very similar to the secure phone. An odd sort of design decision with this panel though is the telephone part actually still requires a burner in order to program it so this chip was made for me by a friend and I can't easily change the programming on it. This small circuit board, which is hiding behind the cables in the bottom of the panel, is a VS-279 voice siren driver, and you'll be hearing this in the video. So here is the keypad for this system. This is one of several different keypad options they had available for this series of panels. Operation of this system is extremely simple though. If you want to arm your system, you just enter your code. When you want to disarm your system, you just again enter your code. And now your system is disarmed. If you want to arm stay, you press stay. If you want to arm instant, you press instant. Or you can do both by pressing stay and instant and then entering your code. So now we are armed stay and instant, so there is no entry delay now. So if I were to hit this switch right here, the alarm goes off immediately. silence the alarm, you just enter in your code. After you've disarmed from an alarm, the LED for the zone that was tripped flashes very quickly, and so does ready. This essentially lets you know that an alarm occurred and was silenced. To reset, you just enter your code one more time. And as you can see, the zone LED is still on because I haven't reset the zone, so now the system is ready again. Bypassing is incredibly simple in these as well. You just press bypass, you enter your code, and then you press the button for the zone you want to bypass. So now zone 1 is bypassed, and the light is blinking to indicate that. So if I were to flip the switch for zone 1, as you can see, it isn't making any effect on the system. The ready light's not going out. Then of course you can arm, like before, 
and then disarm. But when you disarm, it automatically unbypasses anything that is bypassed. The last function on it is the code button. And this is used to change user codes. You pretty much just press code, you enter the master code, then you enter the user number you want to change, and then you enter the code for them. So now, user 2 is code 2345. So if I put in 2345, the system has been armed. To delete a user code, you press code, you enter the master code, you enter the user number, and then you press star. And now, if I try to arm again, it's not going to do anything. User 6 is the duress code. These codes were useful in situations where an authorized user of the system has a chance of being forced to disarm the system. It's essentially a code that looks like a totally normal code, but silently the panel is dialing the central station. Because I have a central station receiver, I can actually demonstrate the panel transmitting to the receiver. As soon as I enter the code, the panel is going to immediately start dialing. Line 1 has answered. And now to demonstrate the feature that gives the star phone its name. And for that, I'm going to need a telephone. This panel uses a voice synthesis chip that was very commonly used in the 1980s, made by a company called General Instruments. So the telephone portion is not directly integrated with the security portion of the panel. It actually functions more like a virtual keypad, so while I'm operating the system through the telephone, you'll actually hear the keypad beeping, because it is essentially emulating button presses on the keypad. So there's two ways you can operate the system through a telephone. The first is locally, and the second is remotely. So we're going to operate it locally first. So it's pretty simple. You pick up a phone, and you press star. Now the panel has answered. So the first thing we can do is press star star for the status. The security system is off. So as you can see, the security system is off. There's nothing wrong. So. Let's trip zone one. Like, let's say we left the front door open. It's also a chime zone, that's why it beeped. So now... The security system is off. Front entrance is not ready and must be checked. How about zone two? The security system is off. Downstairs. Sliding door is not ready and must be checked. And zone 3. The security system is off. Computer room is not ready and must be checked. Alright, now zone 4 is a silent alarm zone. And the panel will actually just transmit as soon as I flip it. It doesn't indicate on the keypad, nor does it indicate on the telephone interface. However, if we still want to listen to it, we can bypass that zone. So we reset it first. Now, to bypass, you press pound, you press star, and then you just use it the same way as you do on the panel. And now, as you can see on the keypad, zone 4 has been bypassed, so now we can listen to it. The security system is off. Office safe is bypassed. So now, we can just arm the system. Like with the keypad, you just enter your code. The security system is on. All system delays are on. All system delays meaning we have the exit delay and the entry delay are currently running. The security system is off. Now, if we arm it stay, using pound 7, and then our code... The security system is on. The interior is off. Because All system delays are on. 
because it's armed stay, all the interior motions are disabled. So zone three is an interior zone, so flipping it on does not cause an alarm. The security system is off. And then of course we can also arm it instant or stay instant. And instant is pound eight, and stay instant is pound nine, so. The security system is on, the interior is off. All delays are off. And now we can get an instant alarm, just like last time. I'm going to make that keypad quiet. And now, let's check the status. The security system is on. The interior is off. The burglary sound is on. Front entrance is in alarm. So it's telling us that the front entrance has been activated and is in alarm. So. Go ahead and disarm that. The security system is off. Front entrance was in alarm. Reset system. So now, so now all we have to do is reset the system. And this is accomplished by just pressing star and entering our code. And now the system has been reset. One thing that's neat about this though is that you can actually add or change user codes or even delete them from the telephone and you can do this remotely as well so you can literally call your house and give somebody access to your security system without even having to come home and do it locally which for 1985 that's a pretty neat feature to have a pretty interesting feature to have so the way you do this is you press pound pound you enter your code you enter the user number and then you enter the new code for that user. The security computer is ready for program. Computer program. So now, like before, we can just arm and disarm with the new user code. The security system is on. All system delays are on. The security system is off. One other thing that this system has is it has three relays inside the panel, and these can be controlled remotely from the telephone as well. So, first we can check the relay status by pressing pound zero. Attic fan is off. Perimeter lights is off. So now we can turn on these relays if we want to. And the way you do this is you press pound and then the relay number, which is one, two, or three. Attic fan is off. Perimeter lights is on. And now our outside lights are on. We can turn those off like before. Attic fan is off. Perimeter lights is off. Now, the last thing you can do with this, of course, is a panic alarm. You have pressed you the have panic. So I'm sure by now you have all noticed the BG-10 pulse station right here. This is actually wired to the star phone and is connected to a fire zone. Something to keep in mind about the fire zones on these panels is that they have a smoke verification feature, so when any fire zone activates, the resettable power is cut off and then turned back on. The panel waits 10 seconds before testing the zone again. After that, the zone has 30 seconds to go into alarm or the panel will just give up. When I demonstrate the telephone interface with the fire zone, you will notice that the zone is actually named smoke detector, despite it being a pulse station. And the reason for this is because I was originally going to have a smoke detector up on the ceiling right next to the strobe light. However, I discovered that none of the smoke detectors I have in my collection are compatible with this panel. 
and a lot of that has to do with that verification feature. Let's put the thing into alarm and hear the VS-279 do its fire message. So now we're just going to wait 10 seconds. Maybe I'll do a clock wipe here or something. This is my 1970s Western Electric Telstar telephone. So I'm going to be using this to demonstrate remote access. So the first thing we need to do is we need to call the system. And now we have to wait for four rings. After four rings, the system will answer and we have to press pound and then the system access code. This is different from the master user code and is a special code programmed on the phone interface portion of the panel. And now we have system access and we can check status. The security system is on. The fire sound is on. Detector is in alarm. Since we left while the fire alarm was sounding, we can actually go ahead and silence it now from remote. The security system is off. Smoke detector was in alarm. Reset system. So now the system thinks that the smoke detector zone has faulted because it thinks the smoke detector did not actually reset. So on the remote access, we can do all the same stuff we can do using the local telephone access. However, the only one we cannot do is a panic alarm. Remember it was star pound? It doesn't do anything. When we're done using remote access, all we need to do is just hang up. Just like that. And we're done. So now, we reset that pulse station. Now that the pulse station has been reset, the keypad is normal again. And that concludes this overview of the FBII Starphone security system. One of the most unique systems in my collection. It's a unique piece of 80s technology that's kind of forgotten about, and it's pretty awesome I've been able to preserve one here for everybody to see. Anyway, though, thanks for watching, and as usual, like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you. Have a good day.